what Newton would have discovered from reading Descartes' book, The, the Geometry, uh, were two main things really. First of all, that Descartes had a method of describing curves algebraically. This was something really new and really important in the early 17th century. Up to then, mathematicians had thought about curves in a purely geometric sense. This was something they had inherited from classical authors, a very geometric way of thinking. Um, Descartes realised that you can describe curves by writing down an equation for a curve. This is something we almost take for granted nowadays, but it's a big step to go from the geometry of a curve to writing down its equation. This was one of Descartes' real key contributions to mathematics, and this Newton would have seen and learned. Descartes also, in the same treatise, had worked out a method of drawing tangents to a curve. And this, again, was one of the key problems that 17th century mathematicians had inherited from the classical writers, and one of the things that Descartes had worked on. And this would have inspired Newton to, to look at the same problem and to try and work on it. So the problem of tangents, certainly he would have picked up in Descartes and tried to improve upon. From his reading of Wallace, he got another uh, aspect which was later important in the calculus, which was the whole problem of areas under curves, what 17th century mathematicians called quadrature, which is literally the squaring of curves. Literally, it's trying to find a square that's an equivalent area to a curved shape. So, for instance, um, squaring the circle is the problem of trying to find a square that's equivalent in area to a circle. Very difficult problem, although it's easy to state. Um, Wallace had some very interesting ideas for doing this, partly based on work from Cavalieri earlier in the century, where you divide a curved shape by dividing it up into lots and lots of very thin strips. This is probably familiar to students who've learned the calculus, and it's a forerunner, really, of techniques in the calculus. These strips were supposed to be infinitely small or indivisible, so they're very, very thin. They're so thin that you can't divide them anymore. But if you add them all up together, it gives you somehow a, a total area for your curved space. So this is a very interesting idea and a very productive idea, although it's quite difficult to get it precisely right. But this was something that Wallace had done in his book called Arithmetic Infinitorum. And Newton took very detailed notes on this book. And we have those notes, so we know exactly what he wrote about them. And he wrote... He annotated the book proposition by proposition, and when he got to the end, it was as though he didn't stop writing. He simply went on and carried on with his own notes. You see this sort of flood of new ideas coming out of this, and this is Newton's own ideas coming out of, of Wallace. So he took up these ideas on indivisibles, infinitesimals, uh, some ideas about interpolation that Wallace had also tried, and he simply continues this stream of thought.